Welcome to Get Moving TV. I'm Dr. Landon and I serve as your host. We're very fortunate to have with us today uh, an artist in residence for us. Uh, we're lucky to have her at our house for the next 30 days while we work on a project we'll uh, talk about a little bit later. Uh, in balance to life is really trying to illustrate to other people what, what lives are like. Uh, and part of what we try and do on this show is kind of go through the arc of people and, and uh, what happens to them during different parts of their lives. I'm looking forward to retirement at some point, and uh, this is kind of what I'd like to do, is really talk about uh, what's going on and how we can express ourselves. So uh, we're joined by Karen Carlson today, who's wondering what he just said and where this is going to go. Yeah, retirement. Yeah. So we brought you out here, uh, and you traveled out here. What kind of transportation brought <laughs> you out here? I knew you were going to ask that. Right. Amtrak. So on a train, I, I, I like to write. I mean, it's really how I work through some of my, my uh, problems in life. And uh, You take a train. And well, I think you see the story. So, uh, what, did you see any stories on that train? Oh, you bet. You? I, for me, Amtrak is it's just kind of an incubator for your imagination. Because some of the people you will meet and actually learn a little bit of their story, which they seem to eager to tell, and then others you won't meet, but you, I, I'm an observer, I love to watch. So in observing them and not being able to freely ask the questions that are running through my head, I then make up stories. So you're, you're a part of your life, and, and I know we're gonna talk later about the project you're working on now, but there was a time when people wrote stories for you and for you to express, uh, express them. So, and I hope that we're going to have the ability to have a little actors uh, workshop here with you. I'm going to talk oh, into it if it kills me here. <laughs> uh, but it, so how did you started out in, in acting? Uh, and mm -hmm. t t so how did you get your start? Because we've got all these young kids here and yeah, they didn't quite make it here and they're trying to figure out what to do with life. And so, so many times it's an accident or just something that happens. Were you born uh, into an acting career? And no. And, and, uh, I, I don't normally tell how I got into it because only because it really just was uh, like a Cinderella story kind of, and I don't think it happens that way really I, not that much. the The great factor that I had going for me because I was born and raised in Louisiana, uh, very poor. Uh, my father saw me when I was 18 months old, and my imagination we we didn't have much my imagination was probably my best friend and my dad was the only one through my life and he died quite young um, that I told my dreams to and uh, what I what I envisioned and I didn't tell anybody else because it seemed uh, <clears throat> Pompous isn't the word, but it seemed, oh, yeah, right, you can do that, sure. And it wasn't that I, I didn't have this desire to be some great actress, I, but I wanted to make film. And I only got to see maybe three or four films uh, when I was a child with my dad, and that was my dream. And his, so I had this amazing uh, person who so believed in me that he said, <laughs> and unfortunately I get emotional, he mm -hmm. said, no matter what you dream, you can do it. If you dream it, you can do it. And his last words to me were literally, don't ever let him take your dreams away. Go for it, toots. And I did. So Ventura, I hope you're listening while Karen gets a chance to recover. <laughs> if you can dream, you can do it. So. You know, I, I, you, know we, you and I are talking, Roy, I'm going to cure, cure what just happened there. And that's that whole Facebook thing, this uh, disease I call FOMO, uh, where my kids are just, yeah. they're locked in here. Yeah. And they have fear of missing out. That, and so I have to take these cell phones away from these girls and all that. And so t in your, you know, as you were growing up, you had uh, protective everything and the helmets for everything. And we, we, we were out in the, I, I grew up in, some other country I'm, at times. I'm older than you are. No, I didn't have much. a helmet. Oh, no, you didn't have a helmet? Oh, goodness, what no. What happened? And no seat belts? And 
No. You had that special rubber stuff, though, in the playground, so you'd bounce if you fell off the we didn't slide. Have, I didn't have a playground. Well, there we go. So. <laughs> we had a lot of dirt under a tree. You no. Know, uh, so you had imagination. Uh, we had imag I had imagination, unbelievably. I remember my mother giving me, she would sew. I don't think I had a store-bought outfit until I went away to college. And that was my, my gift uh, from my mother was, I don't remember, it was $50, $75. I know at the time it seemed like a lot of money. And I got to buy three or four outfits for college. And so my mother would sew and she would give me the wooden spools after the thread was gone and I would draw faces and I would take some of the yarn and make hair and I would create this whole world when it was raining. If it wasn't raining, I was outside. That was, that was my, my world was outside. But so inside you had actors upon your stage and? No, I didn't, I, at five years old I went to see, um, what was that, Song of the South. And I walked out of there and I knew I wanted to have a black lamb someday, and I wanted to do whatever it was that I had to do to be in that kind of world that, that those two children were in. And then, once I thought that and said that, then I just kind of knew in here, yeah, that's gonna be. That's, so for right now, just be here, be happy, grow up, and experience everything. And growing up in the South, in my opinion, is truly amazing. The sounds, the smells, the uh, prejudices, that you have to learn to make choices. And I, that's why I think this school, this, this whole thing you're doing is so fantastic because there are so many kids, lo lots of talent, but there's nobody to say, you can do it, go for it. And I truly believe in that and that's part of why I'm here because I want to pay it forward. Well, and we're going to talk a little bit later about the actors kinds of things that, that happen. So, so your childhood has informed your whole life. Yes, yeah, I think and so. The and I think unfortunately a lot of our childhoods do and and maybe they're not always so blessed as I was, you know. So and, and when you have an actors workshop now, are those still those kids have childhoods they're referring back to or are they? They are, they are. And I, I really see the, the training that I had, which was in New York with the people I call the masters that were Stella Adler and Uta Hagen and Meisner and anybody of my generation knows those names. A lot of the kids today don't. And I say, look them up because those are the people that broke the ground. Those are the people who laid the path for us. and. Having technique, I believe, if you wish to be an actor, is important. Um, but how you learn it uh, can be many different, many different ways. And I just, I go off in tangents. So what did you just ask me? <laughs> well, just to, uh, it's sometimes when, if you have an acting class now, what are, what are kids bringing to it? Oh, 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 yeah, and right, okay. It's not, well, they're not bringing all, spools of thread with, yeah, Yarn but believe it or not, no, there, yeah. there are no electronic devices. I, those are left at the door. You are, we will take a break and you can go, you know, answer your f teeters or no. tweeters or whatever yeah. the heck those are. Um, but no, I ask that you bring paper and pencil and I ask that I have assignments that I give. It, it, there are several things that have to be read and then what to bring to class so that from the first day they have to peel away all those devices and those things, I call them mask, that we have, all of us, all of us, in order to be accepted, not rejected by our peers, by society, by what, whatever, we, we learn all these uh, ways, these masks to put on to make ourselves acceptable, you know. From, from the time you're a small child, you're, whether it's your parents or the society, you're being don't and can't and shouldn'ts and didn'ts and wouldn'ts. And, and so really the class is learning how to peel all that away so that you are completely in touch with the emotional truth which is just like now, all I 
I think of my father, I'm there. And you Emotionally, can bring it, yes. Yeah. Well, I think they're, they're also taught there's, whatever, 247 muscles, and if you move this one that way on their little avatars on the, on the games, that that's going to express happiness or, or whatever, but it's not, when you watch those animated films or whatever you see uh, Tom Hanks I think did, mm -hmm. uh, did one that's uh, there's something not quite right they're not bringing emotion to it they may be moving the right muscle and the right eye to express disdain or whatever but yeah so. and I, I, I really feel ignorant in that because uh, I'm a member of the Academy I have been since 1971 so I get all the films but I don't always watch all of them I try to, to watch ones that excuse me, if I am voting, going to vote, that I at least am voting for something I've seen, but, and my sons have just been unmerciful that I haven't watched Avatar. But I haven't, and I will. I'm just not there yet. So it, it, you've had a, a long, long career, mm -hmm. and uh, you went to college, and well, but that informed part of I, I went to about they, two, yeah. two and a half years of college. I dropped out, circumstances. <laughs> and um, I went to L.A. Mm -hmm. and um, said to my mother, I will either be back in two weeks or I'll call you. And then the whole series of events that happened, I think I arrived on a Tuesday and on Saturday I had my first job and that's why I don't talk about it usually because that just doesn't happen. Um, not without knowing the business, having contacts, and I knew nothing, and I, had, I knew no one. So I, it was almost like I had this little bubble over me that just kind of took me where I was supposed to be. And I do believe that our lives flow if we allow it to, um, as it's supposed to. It, we are where we're supposed to be at the moment that we're there. Well, I'm going to ask you to just do a little bit of name dropping, and then we're going to talk about your, your next uh, okay. project. So who, who have you worked with over the years, and, and what have you admired about their, their work and their technique? Well, I started out in variety shows, which uh, was, came to an end. I went off to study. I came back. I didn't, I had tried to attend some class in LA, didn't understand what they were talking about, went to New York, found the keys to my emotional life, but I still was like a nebbish. I knew nothing. My first, actually it was my second film, uh, was The Candidate with Robert Redford, and I had to test for it. Um, and it was incredible because I saw what, I, I mean, I'm right off the bat working with total professionals. Melvin Douglas had 102 fever one day, was right there on the set. We shot, we did move his scenes up and shoot them earlier in the day. Um, I, you know, Redford, who became kind of a mentor for me, I saw the way he works and everybody has a different way. How does Robert Redford work, just to? Well, he, uh, he I mean, he's very, I, I, I think I would love to work with him as a director. Mm -hmm. I think I would love that. Because he sees what, he knows what you're needing, where place you're needing to get mm -hmm. in this scene. Mm -hmm. And he knows what to do in order to help you get there, if you're not quite there. And to me, that's, wow, that's so giving, mm -hmm. you know. And that was, that experience, Peter Boyle was fantastic to work with. Peter Boyle then came back to L.A. and um, was getting ready to do a film about McCarthy and said to the producers, I worked with an actress, I'd like you to see her. And so I ended up playing Jean McCarthy because of Peter. But it was, it was a very give and take. And uh, Jenny Sullivan, Barry Sullivan's daughter, I haven't seen Jenny in years, but it, it was an ensemble. It was super. Well, said we talked a little bit about how Robert Redford would bring what the director needs and, mm -hmm. and to get that arc of the story going. Mm -hmm. And then we, we've talked last night a little bit about just how some people take that character inside their skin. Well, or you live inside the character's skin, yeah, yeah. And You've got to find, 
you know, you might be playing a character that is so far from who you are, but you, but there are pieces of yourself and things you've experienced that you can pull on to be able to identify or at least understand and have compassion for this person you're playing. This isn't a nine to five uh, job, okay, I'm home, I turn it off, time to make some no. tea and... No, which is what was perfect for me. First of all, I wanted to be everything you could possibly be. One day I wanted to be a surgeon, one day I wanted to... So to be able to play a range of characters was great. But no, I also, first and foremost, was a mother. And so that whole part of my life had to be uh, organized, my children were either going with me or they were going to be on the set or they were going to have their own life and have someone, Robin, who um, was there for me that I trusted, totally trusted. So, no, there is no nine to five. It's, uh, it's not an easy profession, but it's great. And then, you know, we think of our movie stars and the like, and we're talking last night about watching a movie with at a house when eating popcorn with Paul Newman, who of course went on to mm. making popcorn. So how, how did how did they have a family life? You're such a under such scrutiny. Uh, now, of course, it's they were just very private people, right? And real, very real people. Rather than yeah. the Kanye West, Kardashian, expose. Uh, we won't even go I'm there. I'm sorry, I didn't <laughs> didn't really mean to do that. Let's let's talk more about your family. So. Uh, you're working on a project now, mm. uh, and one of the things you're working with is your son, uh, and working on a uh, through a website. Uh, what, what are the well, kinds of things? Well, actually, what 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 it is is that um, acting was not. It was what I literally fell into and was blessed, blessed, and I worked with some wonderful people and had some nice roles, but it wasn't where my Heart, total heart was. I really wanted to be a film editor to write and direct, but because of um, what I looked like, because of some of the choices of roles I made, I probably shouldn't say this, but Redford said to me, don't do television. You really have uh, a film persona well, unfortunately, the way my life was, um, I needed to make a living. And film came, hopefully, mm -hmm. sporadically. Television was more accessible. So I could, I, you know, I sort of became a flavor of the month for a while. And, and that was good. I mean, it was good. I learned a lot. But I would always be the one, the actor, when all the other actors were, all, were schmoozing, mm -hmm. I would be standing next to the camera wanting to know what lens and so on. So I had a couple of opportunities uh, to actually, I was hired uh, by a, a director I had worked with to do the research and be there on a film called The Lindbergh Trials with Tony mm -hmm. Hopkins in this country. And it, it, that was when I knew that's what, really what I want to do, but I can't afford to do it now. So here I am at 70, I always have to count because I had to lie for so many years about my age, I'm <laughs> 72. Um, here I am, I've directed, I've, I went to a film school, Stuart Stern, who wrote Rebel Without a Cause and was just had been one of my mentors for years and years on everything, and uh, Tom Skerritt, who formed the school. And there were th like four or five of my mentors who were teaching this school. So I did that in 2009. And I came back, wrote a short, Tom, as a favor, mm -hmm. starred in it for me with my son, and, and I said, this is it. This is so, I, in the meantime, had gotten into audiobooks and found a book, was sent a book, read it, and thought, oh, I want to do this book. So my partners in audiobooks uh, read it, loved it, called the author, John Irwin, mm -hmm. first time novel, and 
he gave me the rights to do it as an audiobook. And I said, but I don't want to just do it. I don't want to just read it. I want to cast it. I heard 14 different voices. And I want to put in Foley, which is sound effects. So it was like old time radio. Mm -hmm. So that's now out on audible.com. But mm -hmm. in the middle of doing that, I thought, this needs to be a film. So I called John again, and I said, OK. So what would it take to do this as a film? He said, well, number one, be shot in Colorado. And number two, you direct it. OK. Um, so that's, here I am. I, it's, I, I'm here because you all have afforded me a place where I can disconnect. I have a, I have family in my little house. I have, we grow all of our food. We have many animals. And I needed to disconnect, so I've written the first draft. I now need to really um, hone the script to the point that I'm, this is it. This is good. And then I need to attach a name to it, and I have several I hope to approach, and then get my financing. But I don't know, I can't, I don't live in LA. If I lived in LA, I would literally probably not try to do this. But I don't. I live in Tennessee, where there's no one telling me I can't do it. And they're cheering me on. And, and I know I can. I just know in here I can. So and the name of the book is? Into the Snow. Mm -hmm. and, and my son has done a website. That's what you were talking that's about. What Kelsey I was, I was made a website. To, we're all proud of our children. My daughter, oh, hi, Jessica. Yes. I is, want to meet her. Uh, is a civil engineer, and I'm, of course, I'm extraordinarily proud of her. But so uh, you were talking a little bit about the website, and uh, mm -hmm. we're running the running it underneath us as we speak there, so people can oh, get good. that opportunity to okay. uh, to look at it. So what what kinds of things will they find on there? Because it's we're so I mean we're, we've talked with uh, uh, David Palmer, who is with Steely Dan, just mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. you know what are we going to do with music because everyone seems to think it's free. Mm. Uh, and how do we go about educating people, getting them off their their cell phones, yeah, having them real. appreciate artists and, and artistry? Mm -hmm. uh, so how what is that? How does that website get a, get things across? How can they? Well, this was Kelsey's idea. I I, I keep getting asked to teach workshops, mm -hmm. and which I was doing for the last two years, and and I said, honey, my problem is teaching takes so much energy and effort, I put so much into it. I really, my passion is to get this film done. I already have the next one in mind. And I, I really need the time to do this. And he said, OK, Mom, I got this idea. And he started about this web page. And I said, oh, because I really don't care about promoting Karen mm -hmm. Carlson. That is not what is important to me. So, but if that's going to help me give me some visibility, which you have to have in order to get my financing, okay, fine. If there can be something on that website that benefits other people. So he said, all right, what if we do some of the acting mm -hmm. exercises and techniques that you teach, and we put them on this website that people can then choose to join and do or not do? And I said, OK, that's good, that's good. So we have filmed a uh, actor com was just in Nashville. And I opened it for two and a half hours. The Women in Film sponsored it. So he's working on editing that <clears throat> to get that on there, because I spoke a lot about what I feel is really important and missing in the young actors today. But trust me, I, I am. I cannot believe the way actors have to get roles today. I just cannot. Was, and I refuse to work that way. But he's filmed that. We may or may not do a workshop here. We're, we're filming one in Louisiana mm -hmm. at the end of August. And he's going to take those techniques and things and put them on the website. OK, that's great. That's great. That works for the actors. Then there are other things I'm adamant about. I want to make Into the Snow a Green production. So I, I want to connect to things that are of importance. I feel we need to walk gently on this planet. We need to 
take care of each other. We need to take care of the animals we have. There are just so many issues on that. Okay, so that's one connection. The other is one of my sons, Jan, uh, Jan Christian, has a site on Bayou to Bay where he has literally taken a canoe mm -hmm. from the bayou that he took 1,400 pounds of stuff, trash out of. And he started there and he made it's, he did it in three legs from that bayou in Shreveport all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico in three stints. And his mission is to clear our waterways and take care of our water, for people to understand what a watershed is and know that when you drop that one little piece of trash, where is it going to end up? In that enormous abyss, mm -hmm. I've forgotten how many miles he actually saw it. He, he went to, uh, I think it's off the coast here somewhere, he, went, he saw this thing and he said, Mom, you don't ever want to go there. It'll break your heart. So. I want to be able for someone to connect to Bayou to Bay and, and Jan's projects. My youngest son, Keenan, has graduated from Berkeley College of uh, Music in Boston. And I want his music because he is, he's in this music that means something. Mm -hmm. And then my son Kelsey, who's designing that, is his dream is he speaks Japanese. He taught himself Japanese. His dream is to kind of create a community of like-minded people that's self-sustainable, that takes care, creative, all of those aspects, and, um, and I hope to live on it. Karen, thank you so much. I know, we you've, have to go. You've done a great <laughs> job, with them, but it goes by awfully quickly, yeah. so Ventura, Time for you to get moving. Take, take a look and listen to what people are doing. Uh, screenplays, raising children, helping them to get started. Ventura, really, it's time for you to get moving.